Hello, welcome to our garden. My name is Ava and I live here in this house together with my husband and this old lady, Sally. We're located in the south of Sweden, very, very south. If you have seen Carolina at Carolina Landsman's Garden, she is just a couple of miles up the road from here in her village. We have lived in this house for 31 years and that was how I got in contact with Linda because in one of her videos she talked about design and the different requirements for design when you are younger and older. So we started chatting on Instagram and she very kindly asked me, invited me to make a video of my garden. So uh, here we are. I hope you enjoy. We are still in the front garden and when I started to design this garden I was very influenced by the arts and crafts gardens in England. Now there they have different rooms in the garden or different gardens as they often say. So this is the front garden. I also have a kitchen garden and an orchard and so on. So I will in the future say different gardens meaning rooms within the same garden space. And one of the big challenges here was that we have lots and lots of shade because we are in the woods, uh, in the outskirts of the woods really, and we also have stone. So part of the garden has been a quarry at one point. That in most of the places in the garden, they're only between 30 to 40 centimeter at the most, and then it's bedrock. It's very challenging to what kind of plants you can grow in shade, in very dry soil that gets very, very wet sometime in the winter because of the bedrock and it doesn't percolate away. Still, I think I've managed some of it. So here I have dog tooth violets in the springtime that are absolutely lovely. And then a Camilla mollis that is on their way over. So they're going to be cut down soon. And then something I do not know the name of, but it has this yellow that is the theme of this front garden. It's also the driveway for our cars. Lots of expanses of gravel and a white house means that I needed strong colors to even see the flowers at all. And also I wanted to have something green that is green year round. Now we will see the big donut. So before I started to design this garden, I knew that I wanted to make the house connect with the garden. And I went around and looked at old houses and I researched what kind of gardens that was common in old times when the house was built. Uh, Lots of times they had box hedging. Now I love box hedging. In this front garden, I've used it everywhere. And inside I have my beds. So in this bed I have yellow daylilies, I have scabious. Bees absolutely love them. I have some roses that you can't see because they're not flowering at the moment and some sort of herb in the center around the flagpole. Oh, and, and this is the big donut that my daughter-in-law so lovingly uh, named it about 15 years ago. So we're still in the front garden and this is one of my prized possessions. I just love this yellow buddleia. Uh, I bought it in England uh, many years ago. Uh, they told me that it wasn't completely hard, hardy in England and I was very nervous when I planted it. But like Beth Chatter said, right plant, right place. And this surely is. So, and it's a magnet for all the bees, the bumblebees that we have here in the garden. Now we will go and look at something else that I think we have, I have in common with Linda. It's one of the things I love to do in the garden. I love to prune and I love trunks of all kinds. And I know Linda said the same in her videos. To prune so that you have a roof over the head, but still you can plant other things underneath. So this is a laburnum golden chain tree and it is magnificent in spring when it flowers and at the start when I started working in this garden 
I wanted the front garden to be all with roses. Well, um, roses do not like this garden very much and the front garden is one of the hardest places to have them. But uh, I have managed to find some yellow roses that like the and this is one of the few that is in flower now because when it gets really warm, like it's been now, they stop flowering and then they come back in autumn and flower again. One of the other things I have in common with Linda is that I love to breed. Here we have supposed to be three bowls here, but they're not clipped. Another time I might do a Linda clip and show how I do when I tokerize things. Uh, the last thing in this front garden that I want to show is the Karingi Shoma here. I love the leaves of this plant, Karingi Shoma. It has yellow flowers, like everything else here in the front garden, and they disguise the ugly legs of the roses. And most of the roses here are Graham Thomas roses, but like I said, not in flower at the moment. Let's go to the next garden. So now we are in the waterfall garden. It's an obvious name, if you can hear in the background. These are Equinox and I just love them. They attract bees and bumblebees and uh, all kinds of insects. When I decided to uh, design this room, I wanted to have five plants that would echo the whole way around. The five plants that I chose was hellebores, peonies, roses, lilies, and asters. I think it's not possible to talk about all the plants. So I'm gonna point out one that I really love, and that is the lily here that I bought many years ago at Hampton Court in England. But if you are interested in knowing a name of something you see in here, I am on Instagram and you can always ask. As we have so much stone and they are in different levels, it was very easy to make a waterfall. Water is magic in the garden and this was very, very easy to do. We just had to have some sort of pond on the lower side and then pump the water up to the highest level and let it fall back down in the place where it came from. Easy peasy. This garden, uh, like I said before, is full of rocks. So here I'm sitting on one rock that we found where you can see marks after where they've taken the rock out. You can see the whole bedrock here. I wanted to have a tree here, so I asked someone to dig for me and five centimeters down, there was just stone. So no tree for me. Now I think it's time to go to the next part of the garden and that's the orchard. This is the orchard. We have seven apple trees and two plum trees. I wanted to have this a bit um, designed, so the hedge around is round and all the trees are put in a circle. And in the middle, there is a mulberry tree. The kitchen garden I see as the whole engine of the garden. This is where everything happens. This is where I sow plant, where I have a tiny greenhouse, and where I make lots and lots of food for us. I often think of the rooms in the garden 
as the same as if there were rooms in a house. So this is the kitchen. I have just taken up potatoes. I have some garlic that I grew up. I have sage and of course I have corn. I love eating corn. And zucchini, which I really like. I have to find the pumpkin every autumn somewhere in the box hedging over there. So well, let's look at more of the kitchen garden. In the kitchen garden, I also have flowers. In between the raised beds, I have put roses and other perennials. I also have asparagus and other perennial vegetables that I grow here. I love to try to cram in as much as I can. So I have wild strawberries together with the red roses here. And they are white, the uh, wild strawberries. I have yellow raspberries that I absolutely love. But I also like to have an area that is comfortable. That is my rose grotto, as I call it. The fact that it's become almost a grotto is because the last couple of years I haven't trained and done what I should with the rose. So now the rose is almost hang down and I think in a couple of years they will hang down and make walls everywhere except for the small passage in. This monster here is my kiwi and it brings us lots and lots of fruits, but boy, does it grow big. It covers all of the hen pen, and now they're complete shade for the whole summer. I have many, many pots. One of the reasons is that with the climate in Sweden, there are lots of things that are not completely hardy. So I can take the pots in and out and I have them in the winter time in the garage with hanging lights. So the garage is really bright and the temperature in the winter time is about around plus five. Even though I have a tiny and very ugly greenhouse, I try to make it nice so I planted many years ago these vines. I also have parts of my Pelagonium collection. Some birkins, cucumbers, and a little bit of tomatoes. As the greenhouse is so tiny, and I try to cram as much as I can in, then they have to mingle. So here I have grapes together with both pelagoniums and all kinds of other exotics. This is one of two patio areas that we have. Here we sit if it's run rainy weather or not too hot. This is southwest facing. Here I have some of my collections of pelagoniums. I love pelagoniums of all kinds, and I use them dotted around in the garden as well, in pots. Uh, so it gives me color and cohesion all over. We also have grapes here. In the evenings, it is lovely to sit here. You can see the grapes hanging down from the ceiling and here the cricket chirps and it's a little bit feel of the Mediterranean. I love hydrangeas. <laughs> well, I'll say that about lots of plants, I guess but I do love them. I think they have such a presence and they have a good foliage. 
in spring and in autumn and lovely, lovely flowers. So this is a hydrangea we call pink Annabelle here in Sweden. And uh, later on, I will show you Annabelle, which is called strong Annabelle here. And that is actually incredible in the United States. When my husband was going to have his 60th birthday party, we were promised rain. Well, he decided to put up this structure that is like a tent sort of structure that we could put a plastic cover of on the roof and then we could sit there even if it was raining. It makes a room of its own and we like it. We call it the party garden. Now we are in what I call the black and white garden. How everyone else call it the pond garden because we have a big pond. I am sitting at our breakfast table where we often eat breakfast. This is the west side of this garden. We have the morning sun here from the east between seven and nine o'clock. So it's usually very nice to sit here and eat. Not today though. We've had all kinds of weather today. I love green on green. And here I really have green. It starts in the spring as a more of a woodland garden with lots and lots of narcissus. As the months go, you can see more and more of leaves and big leaves and exotics coming. Have a look around and you'll see. I like Kona grass. I think it's really, really nice. And together with the Annabelle, well, what we in Sweden call the Annabelle, or strong Annabelle, it's actually incredible. I think the combination of the two are very effective. this sofa I've spent hours and hours and hours. This is by the pond. If I lay down here underneath the bamboo and I am quiet, I can see all the animals coming. We have toads and frogs and newts in the pond and lots and lots of birds, other animals that will come to feed or to drink or take a bath and it's a lovely, lovely spot to be. I also love it because here are some of my absolutely favorite plants, the big leaf plants. So I have everything from colocaceous, bananas, gunneras to uh, Dixonia antarctica. I also have a tree dahlia that I saw Monty plant and I just had to have the same thing.
So now we come to the Zen room. And this room is called that because I got the feeling of Asia. I've lived in Asia, um, but I do not know enough about Japanese gardens or Chinese gardens to say that this is even a replica or whatever. This room was made because we had so much weeds and we didn't know what to do, so we put plastic and uh, gravel on top. Then I started putting stones in and it reminded me of when I was flying over the Thai archipelago. I could see from the plane the different islands and see how they were in the water. So I tried to do my own version of my memory of Thailand. I talked in the beginning about pruning and about topiary, and you might wonder why you have seen so little of it. Well, the fact is that we've sold the house and we are already moving away. So some of my favorite plants has gone already to the new house. And I will start over with a garden that is non-existing at the moment there. And I'm looking so much forward to it. I wanted to thank Josephine that helped me with this video. And I also want to thank Linda. Thank you, thank you so much for asking me to do this. I never would have come up with the idea myself. But I think this will be a good memory for my husband and me of how the garden was before we left it. And for me especially, because this was the garden where I learned how to garden. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed my garden.